Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Oh, let me do it. Uh, let okay. me do it. I want to. I want to go ahead. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to Photoshop User TV. I am Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys, and this is my great buddy. Well, okay, buddy, Corey Barker. Just we're not there yet. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone. And, and we've got a great guest with us here today. If you weren't here for the last show, you missed it. Go back and check it out. Our great friend Aaron Blaze rocked the house last night. Hi time. everybody. I had a great time. I'm oh, ready to yes. do it again. This yeah. is awesome. Absolutely. I mean, if you yeah. tuned in last week and, and checked out, or if you were just here five minutes ago and saw <laughs> what he did, um, we're all still blown away. We're, in fact, I, I just don't know how to continue on. I mean, in fact, I've abandoned the tutorial I was going to do for this show just because Aaron's still here. <laughs> no, I haven't. Anyway. Well, and the thing is, you brought Aaron on because he's a friend of yours. You have a connection. Mm -hmm. Y'all both went to clown school together, right? It's clown school, indeed. Yep. <laughs> What well, was called wrangling? Yes. Well, actually, there is a connection there. I, I, I always, I never, I, I never want to get into telling the there story. There is a connection. Yeah. Don't ask me though, because I. But can't uh, I don't. I used to I tell that story, and now it's got to where it's like, you know yeah. what? Yeah, I did go to the clown college. Whatever. <laughs> but um, well, what else was I going to say? Oh, I forgot to call it the word of the day for this show. It's a, it's a Hakuna Matata episode. It is now, a worry. Why is that any relation at all? Because Aaron actually worked on Lion King, did you not? I did. Yes. Among others. Yeah. Among many other great animated films. Ah, uh, Simba. <laughs> from back in the day. I mean, Aaron's worked on Aladdin, um, what, Lion Beauty King, and the Beast, Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, um, yeah, Mulan. all those major, before really yeah. Disney went full digital, it seems. Yeah. I mean, if you have Co-directed kids, Brother Bear. Co-directed yeah. Brother Bear, which yeah. he got an Oscar. We have an Oscar nominee yeah. on the show. It First very time cool. ever. Great experience. Right here. If you have yeah. kids and you have DVDs, you probably have some of his work there. Speaking mm. of work, we need to speak of our sponsors who make this show possible. We need to thank Photoshop User Magazine. And they find folks that... NAPP that bring us this fine magazine. National sure Association the of Photoshop issue. Professionals. I don't know when this is airing, if it's before or after Christmas, but check out the Holiday Gear Guide regardless, because yep. yep. you'll definitely want to check out those deals in there. So anyway, what were we talking about? We were talking about Aaron and all he the He was stuff talking about doing. Oscar night, so I, I just have to ask, Yeah. How, what, what was that like? Because uh, you got to go to the Oscar event. Yeah, oh, yeah. It was yeah. great. It yeah. was, uh, it, we were right down with all the other nominees and mm -hmm. went out to all the after parties and hung out with the Hobbits. That was the year that the Lord of the Rings won. And yes. So I had a few that's drinks you mentioned. with you the Hobbits. You went to the Hobbit party. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So that, cool. I mean, that, that's, that's what's got to cool. be the fun part of it. It's just, you know, the, who you're meeting and ran, mingling around with. It's yeah. just got to be a re really interesting thing. Not yeah. to mention, I mean, there being an Oscar nominee. That had to be a, a remark. That had to feel good. It was great. It was a great, it was a, lot uh, a great point in his career. But uh, we are immensely thrilled to have Aaron on the show once again. Uh, we're going to have him show us something in just a moment. But, uh, or, or is it now? No, it's now. Yeah. Oh, it is now. We go Way to take over and not know where you're driving. Uh, well, I just didn't you know what we had next. <laughs> All right, so well, go ahead and tell us, Aaron. So, hey, we're going to now take and bask in the glory that is Aaron. Why don't you show us some of the stuff you've done? Sure. He has a whole plethora to choose from, and this is our, our ode to Lion King. If oh. you saw the last show, I kind of, I went through and showed you, uh, showed a character design that I might do for uh, a film. What I want to do today was take you guys through, and I have a lot of personal work that I do in Photoshop. My own, I do a lot of wildlife painting. Mm. And so what, um, I like to do now in Photoshop is I work out all of my issues. I do these, these big digital paintings that I then take and I do huge oil paintings from now. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I'd take you through, and since today's Hakuna Batata, <laughs> I'm going to take you through a lion painting that I created. Um, a matter of fact, just a year ago, almost to the day, um, I was out in the Maasai Mara in Africa uh, drawing and painting and uh, photographing, and I did this painting when I got back from Africa. So the first thing I want to uh, do is, um, you know, obviously you create your canvas, and then what I, I when I do my uh, my personal work, I love to start with a, a mid tone, something that's not too dark, not too light, mm -hmm. something in the middle. And when I do my own personal work, I like to start with a textured, textured background. So what I and the way I achieve this a lot of times is I'm just I'm going in and getting grunge textures and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff that you can just get online or you go out and take my own photos of of brick walls or, or concrete or whatever and I'll layer them and mm -hmm. multiply them and do all kinds of stuff and just kind of have fun with it and just come up with a, a generic textured background. 
So that's what I, I start here. So then the first thing I do on top of that is I want to I want to work out my composition, lay in my sketch, and so and I keep it very rough. So here you see a lion sketch laid in, and um, and this uh, in this particular sketch uh, I keep it very light because I'm gonna I'm gonna refine this sketch. I'm gonna draw over it. But this is where I really work out my composition. I move things around. I'll clip it. I'll resize. I'll do all kinds of stuff until I got a composition that I like, and then from there. Hold I'm, on, Aaron, I'm sorry, sure. I'm going to interrupt you. What's so funny for a little inside look behind here, as soon as Aaron brings up his first sketch, everybody behind the camera, Juan and them, all make a move so they can watch the screen. <laughs> if the camera goes out of focus, it's because nobody's paying attention to the camera. Everybody's watching Aaron. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead, Aaron. No problem. So here, um, you'll see that I, I'm going to blow this up so you can see it a little bit better. Um, what I'll do is I'll start to refine this rough sketch. And so, and I love, I've got these natural kind of chalky brushes that mm -hmm. I use. So, you know, none of this feels digital whatsoever. That's one of the things I love about it. It feels very natural. But I've got this rough sketch, and here I go in and I start to refine it. So I, I tighten up my brush, I start to tighten my drawing, and this is what I'm going to use as my basis um, when I start to paint. Um, and then here I just continue. I'm just going to take you through kind of the refining process. And at the end of that, here I've got basically a nice, uh, if I can get this to drag, you know, a uh, nice refined drawing. And I start to lay in plants and that sort of thing. But I'm keeping everything still fairly, fairly loose. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing I want to reiterate. Stay, stay loose. Don't get too tight. It's Photoshop. You can delete. You can do whatever. It's very forgiving. That way. It's yeah, very forgiving. Yeah. So the next thing, I, in, in this particular case, I want to start creating what I call the local color. Now, the local color, for um, those of you that don't know, local color is the color of an object that's not lit, not dark. It's just the color of what that object is. And what I do on the, in this particular case is when I do this layer, th this is a layer that I did underneath the drawing, this color, and I put it on multiply. So what that does, when I multiply it, it's retaining the texture in the background. Mm -hmm. So I can utilize that texture and the coat of the lion later on and not have to work so hard yeah. in painting it. And that's the same thing I do on this next layer. I just, I want to get, you know, I start, want to start separating the colors of the lion and the grass and start to, start to see this thing start to come to life. So once I have that laid in, then I can start to render. And here, I'll go, I go back and forth between my light and my dark. And, I'm, and I start to, and I do a lot of this working on top of the drawing so that ultimately the drawing that's underneath will go away. Right. And all I be, will be left with is painting mm -hmm. on top. So as I turn this on, you can start mm -hmm. to see why I use a mid-tone. Because when you, put, when you use that mid-tone, if I was doing this on a white canvas, let me turn that off. Let me turn that, that background off, or the, uh, these off. If I, if I were doing this on a white canvas like we have here, and I, well, I can't do it because it's all it's just a solid layer. But you, you wouldn't be able to see these highlights. You wouldn't it wouldn't see that pop interaction out. with the elements. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't pop. Yeah. So that's why I, I work on a mid-tone so that I can see my highlights coming out. I can see my darks going, going in. You know, that makes so much sense, and I'm kicking myself because I always start on a white background. I'm yeah. like, I am a big goober. It's, well, it's something I bring over from the traditional world. When mm -hmm. I do an oil painting and I set it up on the easel, I work out my drawing, I seal it, and then the first thing I do before I start to paint is do a, a tone over the top of it and mm -hmm. do a wash. Yeah. That way I can, I, it's a much easier way to, to judge your values, meaning your light and dark. So from there, um, it's just a matter of continuing to render. And I start, and this is also another, this is, I, this is important. Um, I start paying attention to temperature also, yeah. color temperature. Mm -hmm. that, that's, as, that's almost as important as value, your light mm -hmm. and dark. So as I go into my shadows, I'm getting cooler. As I'm, like the fur here, even though the, the, the lion's mane is dark and, and rough, you know, as I model the top of it and I start to get those light areas, that fur is reflecting sky. Sure. And so that sky mixed with some of that reddish brown, you're going to get this violet kind of feel in the mm -hmm. fur, and that's what's happening with the light. And so when, the, you know, when, when you start to hit those values, and temperatures right, you start to get something that feels a little bit more real. I'm going to jump over here real quick.
It's like subtle elements you you don't you, you never don't, think you, about. You don't know they're not there. Exactly. You know something is not right if they're not you, there. Yeah, it, it's you got to really train your eye to be sensitive to temperature mm -hmm. and, and value and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So let me jump back and forth. You can see, you know, that there's that's what the drawing was. And here I start to lay in my lights and my darks, and I'm starting to get a little bit of form. It's a little, it's, a, it's feeling a little chalky, but I want to, uh, you know, start working it, and uh, and I can start playing with more color. I can always layer more and more color on top. And in this section here, this is where I started. I decided, you know what? I want to start adding, uh, I want to start adding some background detail. Now because. I've got this textured background. This is the beauty of, of using this textured background. The texture is going to do so much of the work for me. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about it. So you'll see when I add this, when I add some of this refinement, I added a few sprigs of, of tree in the background, and I started adding some grasses. I did very little. If you, if I flip back and forth, there's not a lot. Let me just a few blow that up here. a little bit. It's just, it's very, very loose, and then the texture. A lot of that texture is just coming through, and the texture just. If you just the took that texture away, it would it would it, almost it, have this unfinished. It would be flat and yeah, yucky right. looking. You would really have to work on it that exactly. much more. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I let I let all that do the work, and then finally I'll just kind of come in, and you'll see I start to put like little details, like these little white flowers in there, and uh, and I'll start working. I and the, I the last little depth touches are are right here, and what I've done here. And this is actually pretty interesting. One of the things I did is, you know, obviously I added some of these uh, 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 plants coming up in front mm -hmm. of the, the line to add some interest. I added some, some color variances, some of these oranges and that sort of thing to pop against the green. But one of the other things I did was I, I took that, that layer, that textured layer that I started with, mm -hmm. and I repeated it and I laid it over, I put it, I set it on multiply and I laid it over the entire image and brought the opacity way, way down. And what that did was, first of all, it re if I flip back and forth, you see how that texture got darker? Mm -hmm. But it got richer. Really and that's what some, some detail. It really, really got rich. Mm -hmm. And then when areas where I don't want the texture to be as strong, all I had to do on that layer is wipe it away. Mm -hmm. And I just go in with a, uh, an airbrush on my setting on my eraser and just start put, uh, uh, erasing the areas that I don't want as textured. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, what you have is, there we go, um, this finished illustration of this line walking across the savanna. And it all just starts with mm -hmm. a rough sketch, and I just very methodically take my time and refine. Well, it seems like obviously you have a very consistent process, at least in the beginning. Exactly. And, and then as you build it, you know, it really depends, like you exactly. said before, how many layers you end up with really determines how much detail you, yeah. do you get. I know, what, I know what happens to me when I'm doing a lot of Photoshop stuff. You get a point in an illustration where you're like, you feel like you're done, but you're just you're you're like oh, what oh, I bet I can add this and I can add that you know you just and you, the cool thing about Photoshop is that you can do that and then if you say oops oops I didn't <laughs> like that yeah, you yeah. can take it away I mean if you exactly. look at an oil painting and thought yeah. I really think it would look cool if I did this but it's a risk it is. if it doesn't it look is. good then the, then the painting is done that's know? what I love about this mm -hmm. because I'm working out all of my problems right here mm -hmm. and I can noodle it do it, undo it, do whatever I need to do, and then once I, I feel it's perfect for what I'm trying to achieve, mm -hmm. I print it out, set it up, and there's my reference for my big painting. Well, just uh, having the ability to change your layers and exactly. your blending modes. Yeah. Uh, because Adjust you can color, get a, do whatever. Uh, just yeah. a whole different look. Yeah. And let's say you put a color down and it just doesn't work. Right. Well, instead of having to go back in and paint all that, you yeah. can change that color. Yeah. In, in exactly. no time, whereas you would have to literally go back and repaint it. Yeah, and this is something I want to reiterate. I, I think I said in the last show is, uh, you know, I'm not technical by any means, mm -hmm. and uh, I can't remember if it was this show or the other one. But anyway, it, I, I keep things very simple. You yeah. know, like I said, you know, as I went through this, I'm taking all that traditional knowledge that mm -hmm. I have, drawing and painting and all that, and I've just brought it into here. So I keep things very simple and just build things up. The the, the biggest thing that Photoshop gives me in, in doing my personal work are those layers that we were talking yeah. about. And I can undo and, and do and, and I mean, really, at its goal, you're really, really using basic functionality of Photoshop. You're using layers, blend modes, and things yeah, like exactly, that. But beyond exactly. that, you're not really, I mean, it's really yeah. just a matter of what you're able to create. You know, if so. I blow this up, you can see with this chalk brush that I have that it's a very kind of organic, traditional, mm -hmm feeling kind of image, mm -hmm. um, which is something I really love. You know, I, I can print this out, and so I have a lot of people that don't realize that it's a digital image. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a right. few things I've actually looked at um, on your website. And mm -hmm. uh, again, that, that website is Aaron, Aaron Blaze Art. 
www.blogspot.com. Check that out. He's got a whole host of images that he's done, uh, even some feature film stuff that you've got yeah, on there as well. Some of my uh, my character designs. Um, and some of the character designs art. and a lot of just really, really inspiring stuff. And you see, and you told me what all, all but a few of these are actually done entirely in Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, if they're not done in Photoshop, they are uh, hand done. Mm. So yeah. So almost everything is Photoshop. Now and now one thing, I, and I asked you this earlier, uh, kind of off camera, and I know a lot of people will be curious. Let's say, for instance, this painting or the one you done in the last show. Mm -hmm. How long from beginning to end? How long did that take you? Would that uh, take that's you? the beauty of these. You know, from literally sitting down and deciding I want to do a painting to finishing it. This one took about an hour and a half, two hours. Mm -hmm. um, the one I did uh, earlier, I was about four hours. Yeah. And so that's, I'm that's leaving. great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you sit here and watch this man. Do you, do you just get mad? Fast. You sit there and watch him and you just get mad well, and you go, of course. Well, the funny thing I, I, I'm finding interesting is that um, you're using a lot of techniques that a lot of Photoshop users do. I mean, you're, I mean that, you're talking about have taking that texture and laying it over overall right. to, get, to get a tonal. Right. I mean, I do that on my images as well. I'll right. create a merge copy and use a blend mode right. to do. So you're doing a lot of things that Photoshop designers really do it. You did it because you, you didn't necessarily see somebody else do it. You're like, this needs something. What does it need? I and literally, kind of like the like bringing the skin textures in, mm -hmm. I literally was laying in bed at four in the morning and I sat up and I went, hey, and I yeah. ran over to the computer and, and did oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I'm excited yeah. after this because we've even talked about he's doing all this with CS5. Right. He hasn't even touched on the new erodible <laughs> tips and stuff like that. I can't wait to show him the candy store of stuff yeah, that CS5 has. I'm excited. Has that's, that's, that'll be cool. So. Too much fun. All right, awesome. let's, uh, let's do this. Let's take a quick break. We're going to come right back, and Pete and I will show our measly, <laughs> measly tips little things of the day, and we'll continue on. We'll be right back. <laughs> and we're back. All right, so we are going to talk about a few more things a little later, give some stuff away. But first, Pete has something for us today. What do you have? Well, in honor of Aaron being here, I thought I would pull out something. First of all, I've got this picture of this nice Bengal tiger. And, and uh, it's not quite Hakuna Matata material, but <laughs> I wanted to, I had somebody on the NAP website ask about the art history brush. And to be honest, there are a few tools that are sitting in this toolbar that kind of get this skip over effect. You, you try it one time and you're like, what the heck is this? And so I wanted to share with you a little bit about using the art history brush if you don't have the talent of, say, a Mr. Aaron Blaze to be able to do some, some neat, funky stuff with your pictures. Now, whether you're dealing with the history brush, which is the first one, shortcut key Y, or the art history brush, it's really going to be determined by your history panel. So you're going to want to come up to window and open up your history panel if it's not already open. Now here's a couple things that you need to know. Uh, that if you have a picture and you change it size-wise or you change the mode of it, the history brush, you're going to need to make a new snapshot of it. When I first brought this picture in, it was a big picture of like 4,000 pixels. Well, for this, I wanted to bring it down to a smaller size. Well, as soon as I did that and tried to work on it, the art history brush and the history brush did not work because it was trying to reference back to the original photo. And that's what you've got to realize with both the history and the art history brush. That brush is always going to try to bring it back to the original photo. That's a good thing to have, but you just need to know there are a couple little caveats to it. Well, the thing about the art history brush is what I can do is I can take this image right here and I'm going to make a, a copy or I could just uh, do it on a new layer, but I'm going to make a copy of it just because it's kind of the way I work. And now I go over and I choose my art history brush. And the thing is, I, as soon as I do that, the option bar up here changes. And you've got all these different styles that you can choose from, from tight, short to loose, long. And, and 
what I'd say is just go in here and play with some of these because what it's going to do is it's now going to try to reference back to this original layer and it's going to paint it but it's going to give it that artistic style to it so if you're not a good artist or drawer not a drawer a drawer <laughs> uh, this may be a great way to kind of turn some pictures into painting semi-painting like things what I need to do is I need to go and I need to make a new snapshot Oh, I need to get it off of that. Let's go to that right here. My history panel keeps hiding back there. All right, so I've got this snapshot of this original. I want the original. Okay, here's a little caveat to you. The history brush can be a little daunting sometimes because you've got to know where it's reading. When you look at this, if I click on this snapshot here, it's immediately trying to go back to this snapshot. I don't want that. I want it to go to this background layer. I want to hide that. I want that right there. So I need to take a snapshot with that. Now if I click on that, it's staying to the background layer. Now that I've got it set and I've got this little icon set for that snapshot too, it's saying every time I paint, try to get back to this layer. Now I've got my brush and I'm going to start out with a large brush. I'm hitting my right bracket to just increase my brush size. And now as I start to paint, what it does is it starts to just do these weird artistic paint strokes and all I'm doing is rubbing my paint brush right across it. I'm not doing anything but just dragging it around. Okay, that looks kind of weird. Well, for one thing, it's a little too big. If I decrease well, the size... Like establishing the base color like he was yeah, doing in the Yeah, exactly. And that's what I'll do a lot of times. I'll come in and I'll rough it out. Look, I can just come in and I am literally just dragging across here very quickly. Okay? Now, the great thing is, is I can decrease my brush size and paint back over that same area and it's going to be smaller. And I can come in here and I can add more texture and that's just one type of brush stroke. Let's change it to something like, uh, we'll do a tight short and it's going to be a much smaller, and that's a little hard to see, much smaller stroke. I can then come over here and change it. This is kind of an interesting one, tight curls, it kind of spins it around. Here's the neat thing. Let's say at any time I get to the point where it's looking kind of funky. Let's get it back to that. I can always come in and go back to just my regular history brush. And I can decrease the opacity or leave it 100%. As soon as I start painting, it's going to paint it back to that original. That's what's neat about this. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to lower the opacity down to about... 10% and now I can just bring back a little bit of that detail but still get some of that painterly effect and so here come the eyes if I paint it a couple times it starts coming back in I can now switch back to my art history brush and I'm gonna get down to something very small I'm going to one pixel and I'm gonna cheat and come over to my art history brush set and my tool presets and when you start off it's usually gonna have one in there come over to your settings go down here to your art history and hit that to load up your other ones and say append and that's just going to add them I already have them in there so now I'm going to do something like palette knife and now it's going to give me a whole different look make it smaller and it gets more and more detailed down to one pixel and now I get these really intricate smudges in there and what I love about this brush is that Anytime you do something and it looks bad, just paint it over again because that history brushes keep going back to the original. It's always going back to the original. You can't really make a mistake that you can't fix because you just paint back over it again. You don't like the way those lines look in here? Look, I'm just dragging across it. Now it's giving me this funky shape right here. Come in and just change things. And it's really an experimental tool. It's not going to be one of those that you're going to go, if I do this, it's going to be like this. But it lets you play. And at the end of it, you're going to get something that is going to be just very painterly, very creative. And you're not going to have to have a lot of skill to create something like that. I did this, just pulling in the background and stuff and bringing some of that in. And that was literally five minutes of me just playing around. It's just something to, to get you used to getting in there and creating unique textures and backgrounds. I'm going to use it more and more to create some unique backgrounds that I'm going to use and things like paintings later on. I'm going to get a nice mid-tone and start drawing from that. Great. That was really cool. <laughs> so it's, cool. what it is is, and I have to give a hat tip to Julianne Cost from Adobe because I had to go figure out what it, what this stuff did when uh, I was doing a class on on these tools, and and it really is, if you're not very 
gifted or skilled at drawing, you don't have to be with this. If you can just move around, it's going to do a lot of that for you, and it's going to translate into very free, artistic, flowing type of look. And so it's a fun thing to play with. That's cool. That is very historic. Cool. <laughs> is that the brush off? I've been waiting three minutes to say that line. <laughs> no. Um, oh, that, oh, that's awesome. I love well, it. so, and with that segue, hey, Corey, why don't you history. share with us something? I don't quite have the history brush. I actually got a little video tip. Um, Are you lying? Thing. What? Oh. Wow. Hakuna Matata. Uh, that's Matata. a wonderful thing. <laughs> what? what? He's, I'm getting talked to by. Meanwhile, him. Corey has forgotten to start his IVGA, so he we're going to sit over here. Look at me. Uh, look at me. Don't look at Corey. Stay chan here. <laughs> Give me something to juggle quick. Oh. All right. Um, we good? Nope. So, Aaron, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's such a pleasure to be here. <laughs> we really are privileged to have you here. I'm excited to uh, just talk to you about, man, lens filters, lens erodible filters. tips, all kinds of good stuff. I can't wait. You're going to be excited. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, break as break. we get from Juan over here who tells us whatever he says we do. Juan, we're going to toss to a break, and we'll be right back, guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, we're back, and we're still not quite there with Corey. Uh, so Go ahead, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about contests while Corey's doing this, and then we may just get rid of Corey altogether. Um, but hey, we're going to do a contest. Corey, you just keep playing over there. We're going to give away from on one. We've got two things going on here. We've got focal point. And we've got Photo Frame, both from On One, We're great sponsors. We love On One products. And so you can win both of these. Pete, how will they win that? Well, Pete, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> we go over to kelbytv.com slash contest, and you're going to choose from the drop-down menu the different shows. You're going to go to Photoshop User TV, fill in your name, your email, your website, and your comments. And no, we don't want to hear how Aaron should take over the show and we should be fired. We already know that. But anyway, fill that in, and one lucky winner is going to win both of those prizes. All right. Now, before we uh, close out the show, Pete, swap with me. Oh, are we doing a switch? I'm doing an improv <laughs> tutorial here. <laughs> I had files over there on my machine, but I'm going to jump over here and do, do a quick 3D thing. You know why? Oh, you don't want to do 3D. Because I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, it's really a tip on how to modify a 3D object. So let's go ahead and create a new document. Oh, seven by seven inches. That is not the tab key. OK. OK. Blank document. Everybody with me? All right, let's see it. OK. I'm going to make the black round black. And let's just go ahead and create a new layer. And we'll just, actually, no, we'll set some text. So uh, give, me, give, me a, give me a word. Lion. But, <laughs> Why not? I like how you did it in black. So they're still wondering if you typed it. It's there. It's there. It we not believe be there. me. It's there. It might be there. It might not. There, be there. it is. There it is. Okay. So hold on. Hold on. What did you just do? Mm -hmm. What did you just do? You switched it from black to white just by. Well, I just had. You just change your color, but. Option delete. Okay. Fill, you just filled it. Fill okay. The foreground color with whatever's in there. Okay, I'm going to now change this to a typical movie font. We'll do Trojan. Build. Because mm. we can. All right. So now, go to 3D. New 3D from Extrusion from Selected Layer. You are about to create a 3D layer. I'm aware of that. Would you like to switch? You never have that pop up on yours, do you? No, I had that turned off. <laughs> All right, so here we have our 3D text. Ooh, wow. pretty cool. Now, 
Here is just a really cool thing when it comes to the 3D. When you're creating an object, I'm actually going to rotate this a little bit. In the 3D panel is where you select your line items for, the, in this case, the text. Now, one great thing about text in 3D in Photoshop is that now you have the chance to edit the text even after it's been created. You, it used to be when you would create a, tech, a 3D layer with text, it would actually rasterize the text, and then you'd be done. You wouldn't be able to do anything. You're stuck. Well, now you can actually go into your properties panel and go down here and change the color, for instance. You used to not be able to do this. We'll make that more of a yellow, perhaps. And you can also bring up the character panel and actually change the font of that 3D text right on the fly. So let's say I wanted to do something like a little bit more basic. It'll actually keep <laughs> all those properties and then change the text right there. You couldn't be able to do this before. And all other text formatting as well. You could actually increase things like the tracking a little bit and just adjust all those things you would never be able to do before. You can even go and change the text itself. If you just click on Edit Source, you can go over here and we'll just Since we're getting near Christmas, Noel. Oh, well. Never well, mind. OK, fine. You can tell I've been sitting here thinking about that. <laughs> yes. So when I close that and save the changes, and now it's updated the text. So you have this complete editability. But here's a cool thing I like. I'm going to go into that. Um, so we've got that item selected in the 3D panel. Up here at the top of the Properties panel, you've got these little tabs up here. And when you click on each one of these, a different set of properties shows up, allowing you to modify this object. For instance, one of my favorites is the Deform section here. Because it allows you to go over here and do things like, well, if you hover over this element here, this little on-screen um, on graphic, if I hover over that and drag up or down, it allows me to modify the extrusion of the text. So maybe I want it to be a little deeper, a little more shallow. Hover over another property, and you can actually bend <laughs> the element there on, on different axis points like that, and just hover over this element here, and I can actually change the twisting of it. Now, let's say you did one of that. Can you get back to, like, kind of reset? Now, yeah, if I, if I did that change here, this change is reflected here in this panel. So if I go over here and just bring that twist back down to zero, I can go back here and modify that any time. This just gives you an on-screen graphic gotcha, that gotcha. allows you to uh, do those things right on the fly without actually leaving the, the object itself. You go to this uh, cap section next to it, it also has on-screen handles here to allow you to, well, let's add a bevel first. And you can modify the appearance of that bevel just by clicking and moving these sliders here. So notice I can increase or decrease the depth of it just by moving these sliders. It is doing the same thing you would be doing over here in the properties panel, but it is a non-screen graphic to allow you to do that uh, interactively right on the object. And as I move this around, you can see what kind of things I've got going on with this text here. And not just text, any 3D object that is an extrusion or something like that, you will have those on-screen properties. So I just wanted to kind of point that out, how you can uh, um, get a little bit more efficient in your workflow with 3D uh, by using those on-screen tools, okay? So that's what I wanted to do. That was great. Yeah. Way to do that on the fly. On the fly. What, was that your first Noel? Yes. <laughs> Today. <laughs> yes, thank you. Nice. Thank you. Be hard all week. You want to get Make one sure. more in before we, before we ended up? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. All right. All right. So um, despite all the little issues we had, we had a great, another great show. Aaron, once again, thank you. Yep. Thank you, guys. Very it's been much. A pleasure. We hope thank you'll you come so back much. again and uh, show up the other guys that aren't here today. Of course, Matt and RC are not here. They're, they're traveling today. They're teaching, yeah. Te teaching on the road. Uh, and Scott as well will be out on the road as well. So we'll hopefully that we'll have them next time. So again, thank you guys for joining us on behalf this of is, myself. This is the last show of the year, I believe. This, this is the season finale. Yep. <laughs> you are right. This whole time we've been doing this, we didn't. Right know. on. You were so lucky. You're here in the last episode. I am. Episode. I got to see you sweat. It was great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to see our problems and juggling everything like that. But uh, it's been a lot of fun. All right. So thank you guys. Be sure to tune in. What are we, in a month's time, we'll be back on the air? I don't know. I just y'all don't let me leave, so I just show up. Yeah, we, do, we never actually leave. So yeah. everyone have a great holiday, Christmas, New Year, all those good things. We will see you in a few weeks, I guess. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>